Go away. Okay, I don't have any chats. I don't think. Hold on. Go away. I don't want you either. Why can't I see the chats? Well, let me know. Holler. Holler if you have issues. Next step. Um, we're going to insert some blank rows and we're going to do it smart. So uh, it wants us to insert four rows at the top. We are not going to enter them one at a time. You know, here's a trick. So uh, make sure you're selecting right on the numbers, the row numbers, one, wait, one, two, three, and four. Make sure you have the whole row selected. So you wanna make sure you drag, hold down the left button on the row numbers. I'm so sorry, I joined kind of late. Is it possible to start over or I can try and catch up? Um, well, we did one step. So go to insert header footer. Okay, I'm still opening the file. We did insert, way to the right, go to header footer, go to footer, it's way at the top. And then on the left, put your file name. On the right, click on sheet name. And then you got to click out of the sheet name so you can see inventory and then go to normal. I don't want to do too much more. Everybody's. Okay. That's the only thing you missed. Okay, one more time. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. So you went to insert, go clear to the right, find header footer. It's in the text group, header footer. At the top, you see go to footer. And then you wanna make sure you're in the left to put the file name, in the right to put the sheet name. Sheet name is right beside file name. Click anywhere above the sheet name till you see inventory and then go to normal. Normal is way down here on the bottom right. It's a little icon with a bunch of squares. If so, you hover over, it says normal. So okay, now. next. I'm going to scroll over the four row numbers, then right click on one of the selected row numbers, and you should have four new rows. What do we do with the numbers? Yeah, we saved the file and and gave it a file name. And what was that question? So let me undo and do this again. I selected the first four rows. Make sure you drag on the one, the two, the three, and the four so that the entire rows are selected. Then you want to right click on one of the selected row numbers and choose insert. And it does four rows instead of just one. Now look, some people might have done this. Right click, insert, right click, insert. That's fine. I'm just showing you a faster way. We need four rows at the top. Am I doing this again? Okay. Select the first four rows. Make sure you drag on the one, the two, the three, and the four. And then right click on one of those selected rows, the one, the two, the three, or the four, and choose insert. And it gives you four rows at a time. Okay, next we're gonna insert. Okay, make sure you're in A1 and make your active cell A1. 
go to the insert tab and way over to the right in that text group again, click on word art. And we want the first word art, fill black text color one shadow. As soon as you see it pop up, type Tom's place like that. So I'll do that again. I'm in A1. I go to insert tab, go way over to word art and choose the first A, fill black text color one shadow. And type right away, don't screw around. If you mess around, it just makes it funkier. It doesn't go as smooth. Now, once you've typed Tom's place, click in there on the word art and notice the border is <clears throat> dashed. We want to click on the word art, kind of move it. To move it, you use the border with four arrows. And then I click on the border to make it solid. So that when you go up here and change the size, we want to make the size. Did I use the right one? Outline white, background color, hard shadow white. God, who the hell? Can you imagine having the time to make up these things? <laughs> anyway, we want to make the size. Go to home and make 5432. And if you have the border selected, you don't have to get in there and try to select it like that. Like some people try to select it and they end up doing a partial change. So little trick, if you make these borders solid, everything you do happens to what's in the word art. Mine's going back. You have to place it in a certain place. It, it won't let me move it. It goes right back to the same. Um, try using the bottom border, hover over the bottom border, and we want it to be in C1 and E3. <clears throat> now, you can't get the Tom in C1, but you can make sure the border's in C1. And I, if you use the bottom border, like when you're dragging, took me a while to figure this out. Use the bottom border instead of the top. Sometimes the top will say, no, you can't go there. Is that what's happening to yours? Yeah. No. So use the bottom border. Okay. Did you get it? Yep. Right on. The tricks of the trade. Okay, so next we're going to select a5 through h5, just a5 through h5. It's all these titles, headings, whatever you want to call them. And we're going to format them. Um, first, we're going to do wrap text. Then we're going to center middle line and center. So you want these two. Uh, it's in the alignment group, and you want to center and middle align. I don't have um, values in my interest cost column. You don't what? Wait, let me turn this up. Why can't I hear? I have this way down. Okay, say that again, honey. I don't have uh, values in my interest cost column. Interest cost column. Like oh, I shouldn't either. I shouldn't either, dude. I was doing something today with somebody that was lost. Hold on. I, I should not. Thank you. I was helping somebody and I used this file. It just looks a little nicer than ours. It looks what? Nicer, like the tabs. I guess we haven't gone to those steps yet. Um, 
Well, that's the only thing I did with that girl this morning. What do you mean with the tabs? Like down, like the column A5 through H5, the downtown store is not centered like your website store is not. Well, we, we just did that. Okay, okay. you want to select, <clears throat> you want to select A5 through H5. And we're going to do wrap text. And then middle align, which is above center. And then center. Yeah, I got it. I didn't do wrap text. Oh, okay. Not all right. Freaking me out. Okay, then. Is there? A, I don't. Let me see if there's a chat. Anybody chatting? Questioning? Can you do it again? Why do I keep seeing that? Um, that was from before, right? I don't have to do that again. From a previous step. Okay, cool. Because I keep doing it again. <laughs> All right, we'll never get done. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, we're gonna end the formula. Are you ready? Now, I'm gonna do something. If you're reading the instructions, bear with me because I wanna do this. I think it's a good way to, to visualize what we're learning. So go to H6, type equals, Click on G6 times is your asterisk. Oops, what, what, what happened? Times is your asterisk. And then they wanted to multiply it by this 3.65%. So go to B23 or type B23. Some people type it. Hit enter. Does everybody get 967? Yes. Yes. So go back to that formula and fill it. Use the little green box at the bottom right, hover over it till you get a black plus sign. Hold down the left mouse button and drag it. Did y'all get nothing? Yep. Okay, now I'm gonna show you why. I just got a bunch of 967s actually. Okay, so then you used copy instead of filling. Okay. So go back to it and use the fill button and you should get a bunch of, but let me show you what it's doing. So in H7, it copied G7 times B24. What's in B24? Nothing. Nothing. So then it did B or G8 times B25. There's nothing in these Bs. There's nothing. We want it to do G7 times B23. G8 times B23. G9 times B23, right? We want B23 to stay absolute in our formula when we copy it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We don't want it to copy relative. We don't want, we want it to do G6, G7, G8, G9. Notice there's numbers in all of these. But we do not want the formula to copy B23. We just want the formula to be all the Gs times that percentage. So to get that to work, Go back to H6, where we did our formula. Click up here in the formula bar. Up above here where it says FX, click right to the right of the B23. Okay, now Mac users, I think you do command. Um, we have to do the F4 button, which is a function button, way at the top above your numbers, F4. When you click F4, you should get dollar sign B dollar sign two three. Is that for everybody or Mac users? No, Mac users, I think they have to do command F4. We can look it up. Or, you know, just type the dollar sign. Type the dollar sign before it's the F4. B. It's F4. What is it? F4 for Mac. FN command F4. Thank you. 
I knew there was something different y'all had to do. So this tells the computer, multiply G6 by B23 and copy B23 when you copy my formula. So now let's fill it. Did you get numbers down the line now? So what do we do if we're not a Mac user? In the Just F4, it's a function key right at the top, top of your keyboard, right above the four, F4. It's a function key, so if you hit F4, you should get the dollar signs. Or you can type the dollar sign, B dollar sign. I just, I use the shortcut of four. <clears throat> People in the real world are so glad to learn this. I mean, think about it. You would have had to type G7 times B23, G8 times B23 instead of using your fill button. We know how to fill a formula, making it absolute. What was that F4? Key. It's up there on the top of your keyboard, all those function keys. There's an F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. You want to hit the F4. Yeah, but it's, it's always F4 when we want to make it absolute. Yes, yes. That is always the shortcut to make it absolute. I, I've had people in my real classes type an F and then a four. Shut up. <laughs> That one always kills me. Okay, did it work for everyone? Are we all happy? It didn't work for me. Okay, so let's look at your formula. You should have equals G6 times dollar sign B is in boy dollar sign 23. I have that, but it's still not like copying for like all the different rows. Okay, so you need to make sure you click on the little square at the bottom right and get a black plus sign to fill it. No, but after I do that, it still like has the same for all of them though, or like nothing. Okay, you definitely have G6 times dollar sign B dollar sign 23. Correct. All right, why don't you go up to your formulas tab and make sure your calculation options have automatic checked. Okay, that was the issue because it was set to manual. Shut up. That that happens on our on our skill builder one, but I've never had it happen on this one. Awesome. So you checked automatic and you're all good. Yeah, thank you. Yay! I'm a troubleshooting fool today, people. Are we ready for the next one? Yes. Okay, we are going to select um, <coughs> Oh, how tricky are you? Okay, we're going to select uh, the range from C18 through 818. Yes, it's blank, but we're going to go to home tab and go to the auto sum and click auto sum. Everybody's good with that one, right? Nothing new. They try to kind of trick you on this one, I think. Leave that range selected. Go to cell styles. Um, you guys remember how go to the styles group, cell styles, and we want it to be total, total cell styles, way to the right, a little below the center. If you click away, you can see what it did. It's got a line at the top and a double line at the bottom. So I'll do this one more time. I selected a blank range of cells. C18 through H18. I click on the word auto sum. There was somebody that had to do the drop down and choose sum. I'm not sure why or who. 
and then go to cell styles toward the middle over to the right and make them total cell styles. Okay, that was easy. That was nothing new. We have three new things here to do new. And I think I do mine a little bit different than the instructor. So bear with me. Yeah, I, this is when I fill it all at once. Okay, we're gonna go to C19. Notice at once location average. So we're gonna go up to the, where it says auto sum and click on the drop down arrow. We're looking for average. So the first thing we do is go to cell C19, click on the drop down function arrow up here, right to the right of auto sum. Make sure you're on the drop down. We don't want to sum it, we want to average. Click on average and stop yourselves. Let's take a look at what it's going to do. Let me make sure everybody's where I am. I keep seeing that. Can you do it again? All right, everybody. Now, let's take a look at what it's asking us. It, or the computer's in a marquee right now, and it's blinking. And it says, do you want to average C6 through C18? Do we? Is there something wrong with that range? Uh, the last one gives the total is the problem. Very good. The only time you would include, include that total to get an average is if you're paying me, because that'll make it much more. So we need to change the range. Excellent. So many people in the real world click on this, they do the average, they hit enter, and they walk away, and it's wrong. So there's a couple ways you can do it. I'm gonna show you how I do it. I go up here and I click on C6 with my white plus sign and I drag down to C17 and I hit enter and I get 5296. Some people like to go up here to the formula bar and all they do is change the 18 to a seven. That's another way to do it. And there's probably other ways to do it, but you guys figure out your way. This range should be equals average C6 through C17. Can you do that again? Okay. I'm in the C18. I'm sorry, I'm in C19. I click on the drop down function arrow beside auto sum. I click on average. It's telling me that it's gonna average C6 through C18. I do not want C18 to be included. So I go to the C6 with my white fat plus sign and I drag down through C17 and hit enter. Okay. Right on, right on. Right on. The next one, we want to see the maximum. Now we're going to go to the drop down arrow, function drop down beside auto sum. Choose max. Again, this time it says, hey, how about the range C6 through C19? No, we want it to be C17. Now let me try some. It's blinking right after the nine right now. If I hit a backspace, oh, it takes away the whole thing. Never mind. Don't do what I do. I'm just going to drag it like I usually do. Drag it through C17, and you should get 7580. Now, had we just hit enter, what number would that have been? Had I not paid attention, Put attention, I don't know if that's nice to say. Drop down, max, and I just hit enter, it's gonna give me the total, right? Don't want that. Drop down, max, 
select the correct range, enter. Okay, I'm gonna keep going, you guys rock. Uh, drop down, min, and adjust the doggone range again to C17, enter. Are we good? Okay, so next, we're gonna do what they wanted us to do on Monday and I did not. Today, we're gonna do it. We wanna fill all three of these functions that we just created over to F. We wanna do it for the West Side Store, the Central Store and the Valley Store. So select the range C19 through C21. Grab your fill button down here at the right. Don't worry about this paste button here. Hover over the little green arrow. I'm sorry, little green square in the bottom left till you get a black plus sign. Fold down and drag it over. So now we only had to do those functions one time, and now we're copying the functions for each store. Check your numbers. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. Oops. So I'm gonna take my three functions, C19 through C21, Hover over this little fill button down here till I get a black plus sign. Hold down the left button and drag it over. Did that, did that. All right, now we're going to enter a chart. Are you ready? Charts are fun and pretty easy. First, we're going to do a clustered chart. Then we're going to do a pie chart. So select the range B5, B as in boy 5, through F17. B5 through F17. Just like that. Go to insert. Um, I want to show you that you can do this. Click on recommended charts. Isn't that cool? So it actually helps you out. So if you ever have to insert a chart in a paper, know that these recommended ones are kind of cool to help you know what to do. And we want to go down to the third one. We want the clustered column. And click OK. And I'm going to stop right now because there's always somebody that didn't have their selection right or it didn't come out right, or something went haywire. Well, how did you get um, to that? Because I don't have a design tab. I didn't use a design tab. I'm gonna undo. The design tab showed up when I inserted my chart because it, you can change oh, the okay. chart design. So okay. I'm gonna select B5 through F17, insert, Recommended charts and choose the third one down. And then the design tab shows up because it allows us to design our chart. There should be a design and a format tab that shows up. And that shows up all the time when you insert shapes, pictures, tables, charts. Are we all good? Wow, I can't believe it. There's almost always someone that has to reselect. Uh, okay, the next step, it wants us to move this chart. So hold on, let me see where we're putting it. We wanna move the chart kind of like right below all of our data. So in, in order to do the My T Lab, we have to put it within the range. So we have to leave a little bit of space. 
So it wants us to move it between A26 and H44. So you're going to take the border edge at the top, hover over it till you see the four headed black arrows. Oh, undo that. I just did it wrong. Uh, I'm on the wrong place. Okay. So we want to drag the chart down too. And this is where we have to be careful. We're going to go to A26, but we want to leave a little bit of space before and above. And then we're going to drag it over. I'm going to use the corner to H, leave a little space, 44, drag it down, leave a little space. Notice I left a little space the whole way around. Space, space, space. Okay, let's make sure everybody's with me on this. So it has to see it inside the range. You can't just plop it right on the, the border of the cells. Does that make sense? Wait, let's make this. Okay, can you see how I left a little space the whole way around? I'm trying to make it bigger. Wow, all righty then. We have to change the chart title and it should be inventory. So um, here's another thing that it's kind of a cool trick. So if you just click on the box where chart title is and start typing inventory. No, you can't see it down here, but you can see it up here in the formula bar and then hit enter, it shows up. And the only reason I say that is because people get in there and they start trying to select over chart title and they jack it up and they end up doing this then they have trouble and they got to go back. Anyway, the trick is, whoops, just, oh, my innate, yeah. Just like select the box and then you're typing up here, but when you hit enter, it shows up down there. Is everybody with me? Is, are things going this well? Actually, I have one question. Like, how yeah. for the chart? Like, how big? Like, what um, rows and columns you do you want to cover again? Oh, A twenty six, H forty four. All right, thank you. You got it. So we had to stretch it to H forty four. Just make sure you leave that little gap all around it. Don't put it right on the line. Okay, next we're gonna select two ranges non-adjacent, which means it's not that easy, like B5 through F17. So we're gonna select a range C5 through F5 and C18 through F18. So C5 through F5, all the store names, and then all their totals. Hold down control on your keyboard. C5 through F5, Hold down control and select C18 through F18, and you can let go. So we should have two ranges selected, the store names and the store location total. Insert, and we want a pie. So pick the pie, the round one that looks like a pie, and it's the first pie. And stop right there. Don't do anything yet. Does everybody have what I have? No. Because next, go ahead. I got stuck because um, I have a half screen. So it's hard for me to hit control after. Huh? All right, let me go back. All right. So you select. Um, 
<clears throat> C5 through F5, and then you hold down control on your keyboard. And then select C18 through F18. I'm not understanding how you can't hold down control. Then go to insert, pick the pie, and the first pie. Did it work? I'm telling everybody to stop because I want to make sure they do this right. The, the sheet splits between F and G. How do I fix that? Hold on a minute. Let me see what's happening. Well, all that is is it doesn't split. That's just like if we were to print this right now, that's how it would print. So it's not really splitting. Are you in the wrong view maybe? You should be in normal view. Make sure you're in normal view. Because if I go to page break view, I can see it like that. Do not want that. Absolutely not. You have to be a normal view. Is everybody good? And then you select the stores, hold down the control, go to insert pie, and it's the first one. Then we're going to use the move chart location button. We are not going to cut and paste. We are not going to drag and drop. We are going to go up to the ribbon. You should have a design tab at the far right. Go way to the right, the last icon. Click move chart and then click new sheet. And we are calling this inventory chart. Inventory chart. This is on the test and you must do it like this. I hate when somebody does, they'll do a cut and paste and try to slap it on a worksheet and it looks stupid. Click OK and you should have a big, fat, beautiful pie chart on its own worksheet. Is everybody good? I will do it again. You got it. Can you do it again? Yeah. I shall do it again. Let me get rid of my worksheet. Daily. Yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah, I can do that. Oh, that's scary. Okay. I selected C5 through F5, C18 through F18, insert, pie chart, first one, move chart. It's the last icon at the far right. Move chart. New sheet, inventory chart. Okay. Insert, pie, move chart. Make sure you use that move chart icon. Click on new sheet. Don't do an object. It'll even look dumber. Inventory chart. Okay. No. Sure. Go ahead and replace it. Are we all good? My my dog's all like, what the, the picture hell? for What's my the picture of the chart itself isn't showing up on the new page. All right. So I think we should probably close it, erase it, and start again. So I'm gonna. Delete okay. my inventory chart. Make sure you don't delete the inventory tab and start again. Uh, just start again. Select from C to F on the names, C to F on the totals, insert chart, and do the first one. And make sure you click on new sheet, not object. Inventory. All right, thank you. Okay. Did it work? Yay. Yes. Awesome sauce. Okay, where are we at? Anybody got anything to do? Do I have to do it again again? I split that. Uh,
All right, so where am I? Where am I? Oh, you want me to do it again? Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this one. We still have time, we're doing good. You know, I've been thinking this class is over at 115 all this time, and it's over at 145. Hello, nobody's told me. Selecting the names, hold down control, select the totals, insert, pie, the first one, Move chart. You should see my dog look and see. New sheet. Inventory. I get really weird on this one because I can't stand it when I'm checking stuff. And then you can tell they moved and copied. It just looks stupid. They slap it on the worksheet. All right. We're going to change the chart title. Oh. Oh, yeah. The chart title. Okay. We did the worksheet title. Now we got to change the chart title. The chart title should be store inventory. We want to do layout to, oh, and then this call out. These are cool. Okay, you ready? So chart title, click on it, start typing. So store inventory. Is that what I, what I said? Store inventory, correct. Now, Go up to the quick layouts on your design tab and choose number two. You should now see the percentages on the pie and the, uh, what's this called? Um, the, uh, the, I can't believe that I can't remember what this is called. Have you gone after the store inventory? Uh, yeah, it's right. So it shows the legend, the legend. I couldn't remember what the heck that was. So I did layout to, let me undo. All right, the first thing I did was make the title store inventory. Then I went to quick layout at the top left and chose layout number two. It gave me the legend at the top and you should see the pieces of pie have a percentage. Are you ready for this? This is cool. Click on one of the percentages signs in the pie. And then do you see this plus sign over here like I have? That means elements. If you click on the plus sign and then go away. I don't want this here. This is bothering me. Hold on. Click on one of the chart and then do data labels don't uncheck data labels click the arrow to the right so that you can see data call out how cool is that i'll undo and do that again i don't know why i get excited over this one i think it looks cool so first i click inside the pie on one of the percentages it gives me a plus sign up here Actually, I had the plus sign already, but anyway. So go to chart elements, data labels, hover over to the arrow. Don't go unchecking data labels. And then find data call out. High chart, change that. Then we're doing file name and sheet name in the footer. And then the width. Okay, cool. We're almost done. Now, we gave it a header. We, we gave this uh, workbook a footer on the inventory worksheet. The inventory chart worksheet with our pie does not have a footer. So we have to go to insert. Find the text group way to the right and do header footer. Let me make sure everybody's with me. And then you have to do custom footer. And in the left, it's already blinking in the left. Go up here to these little icons. And you should be able to find file name. It's the one with the green XL. That's how I find it right away. It's got the green with the X. 
insert file name, go over to the right section, make your cursor blinking over here and do the sheet name. When you click OK, you should see what it looks like. Here's your file name and there's the inventory chart over here on the right. Okay, I'm clicking OK. And no, you cannot see the footer when you're looking at your document right now. Um, that's only in Word. In Excel, the only time you'll see that footer is when you print it. It's kind of weird, but. Can you redo that? Um, okay, so I'm in my pie. I go to Insert, Text Group, Header Footer, Custom Footer. Click the icon up here that says file name in the left. Go to the right and do sheet name. Oh, now I've done it. Go to the right and do sheet name. When you click OK, it'll show you the sheet name, inventory chart, and then there's my file name and say, okay, don't say it, click it. Are you good? Yep. Okay, so now uh, go back to the image. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. Let me see what it tells me. That's what I would do. Yeah, yeah, I, okay. So um, make sure that you're on the, um, Oh no, that's my other spreadsheet. Yeah. Go to the inventory worksheet, the first one where we put the clustered column and stuff. I don't have a chart title on here. What the hell? Oh, hold on, hold on. I don't want to get ding. What do we title that? Inventory. Hold on, please. I must have done that 10 times. What the hell? Inventory. Okay. So you want to be on the inventory worksheet. Now this comes to somebody had a line going between their F and the G. You know that this used to be such a pain. You'd have to go to page break preview and you'd have to go drag these columns over and it was such a pain in the butt. You'd have to go here and drag this dotted line to the solid line. Oh my God, I can't believe how nice they've made this. So now from normal view, you go to page layout tab and in the middle, you'll see scale to fit. Go up to the width, only the width. Click the drop down instead of automatic, make it one page. Shut up. So now if you print it, it'll just be one page. Is that ever cool beans or what? And then it says to make sure that we have our. Uh, I think it just wants the sheets to be in order and we, we should have them in order. So you should have inventory chart is your first worksheet and then inventory is your second. And I did the page layout tab. I went to the scale to fit group in the middle and I made the width one page. How are we doing? Are we all good? Close it, save it, submit it.
I had to go to student view so I can see my 50, because I'm going to get a 50. I have high hopes. What? We're going to documents. Excel, chapter two, upload and submit. Alrighty then, uh, refresh. Oh, it's going to give me a big fat zero. It already did. Shit, why did I refresh? Hold on, guys. Everybody get a 50? I got a 48.8. So click on your little dots. Well, I'm looking at what I did wrong. Yeah, and click on your dots, view submission. What did it say? Well, I think it's because for when I was trying to put Tom's place in the range of C1 to E3. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got the same one. It hey, didn't. you know what? It looks like I got the same thing too. Shut up. Guess what? Anybody that has 48.75 is getting a 50 right now, right now. Awesome. So I did something wrong too with all that. Who knows? We did change it to 32, right? You know what it is? I don't think I did the right word art because they've changed the name since these instructions and I didn't match it up. So I'm pretty sure we used the wrong word art. That, I'm pretty positive of that. So everybody's getting points back for that one. That was all me. So what am I doing? Go back here. I have to go back as a teacher. What, what? That's it. Um, does anybody else have any questions or issues? I'm gonna go change all those to 50s. Is this all we're doing for class today? This is it for today, buddy. I'm impressed we got this done. We rock. Awesome. We'll see you on Monday then. See you Monday. Root for my Steelers. I don't know what's going on, but you know the, you know the, you know you're going to root for my Steelers. Now they're a hard watch now without Roethlisberger, but they were a hard watch with Roethlisberger. So. <laughs> yeah, I guess you have to be from Pittsburgh and totally devoted to get as excited as I do. Yeah, he's able to beat Detroit. Oh my God! Tell me about it. Heaven forbid I can ever just have like a way that overtime cool was so funny. Oh God! It was <laughs> it was hysterical. Yeah. Upset because he was ups he was worried about that game all week just because the Steelers can never produce against the teams they should be. I know, huh? Exactly. Yeah, uh, you guys have all a good right. weekend, though. Yeah, you too. Peace out, people. You guys rock. Oh, wait, I got to go to instructor. Yeah, I talk to myself a lot. I got a 47 because I got a 0.5 on. What is it? What's the other one you missed, hon? Assigned. Who are you gonna growl at? You gonna get somebody? Move the word art. Oh yeah, that's the one that we all had trouble with because we put the wrong word art. Oh. So I'll give you your points. Is this is this Anaya? Yes. Gotcha, yeah. buddy. I'm giving you a fifty right now. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Can you help me with performing the code out on the pie chart? The code out. Code out. What does that mean? Um, it's just so on the uh, instruction. It's number on the number. Let me see. It's number thirteen on the step thirteen. Number thirteen. Let me see what that is. Yes. I'll I'll give you the points. Who is this? This is Ando. Ando. Oh, Do Ando. Right on Ando. Yes. Um, it's number uh, thirteen. Chain the data. Let me see. Oh, that's the wrong one. That's the final result. Let's start it. Yeah. 
So the call outs you missed? Yes. I oh, okay. So we did, um, you had to select the pie, go to the elements, and then data labels, and we did the call outs. Do you know what it is though? Um, I don't. Can you please show it to me? Yeah, let me show you. It, it, they're actually fun. I love these. I don't know why. I just think they're so cool. So we did Uno Memento. Am I still sharing? Y'all good? Yeah, I'm still sharing. All right, let me get this dog on thing. Come on now. You go away. Well, what's going on? Normal view, way over here, way up there. What is happening? I'm going to try this again. Oh, as soon as I got impatient. Did you see that? Yeah, it happens that. every time. My impatience gets me every time. All right, I'm just going to sit here and wait this time. I don't know why it's taking so. There we go. You got it. So we did, we clicked on the pie. Yes. We clicked on elements, which if you check out this corner over here, the plus sign. Yes. And then we go to data labels. Don't uncheck data labels, keep the check mark, but click on the little arrow, the tab beside it, and then go to data call out. Oh, Isn't that cool? Yes. So instead of the percents being on the piece of pie, they're on the outside. Let me see what outside end looks like. Looks the same. Oh, look at that. Shut up. I'm just playing now. That's it. it. Professor, I got All it. right, cool beans. So now you can resubmit it to get a better score, but I will just go and give you a, a 50 if you'd like. Because that's what I'm doing right now. You help me out. Yeah, I'll give you the 50. And though. Peace out. That's right. Let me do this for the rest of the subject. That's what's good about coming to class, huh? That's true. Give you a reason to show up. I bounced out of my Excel though, so give me a minute. I'm going back in here to do these updates. Dope. All right, I don't like the screen. Something's wrong here. It's not showing me enough. Doe, there you are. Did you? I haven't submitted yet. I'm still working on Oh, the... okay. So you're going to resubmit it. All right, cool beans. Yes. That was weird. <laughs> Very weird. Uh, I want to just go to the other two. Sorry. Sorry, everybody's seeing everybody's scores. Don't look. Don't look. There's hardly anybody on here, though, Endo. I'm sorry. Is it just you and me? Okay, so we did that, right, Endo? Yeah, that's you. Okay. So everybody's good. Where am I at? Fifty. Lila, I'm going to adjust you. Let's do this one, Grahala. Oops, can't have 51. Oh, it's okay. Oh, yeah. 
kitty cat. Dustin, are you with us? Julian, what happened to yours? I got caught up with work. It wasn't able to finish mine, but I'll. Oh, all right. Um, do you need help? Are you okay? If you don't mind, we can go back to like. Last Where day. are you? Um, I did the location, average, maximum, and minimum for the value store. All right. So you did the minimum, and the max, and the average. Yeah. All right. I'll finish these later. It's all the same. Everybody's forty-eight point eight. The same thing that I missed. Uh, I'll change all those to 50. Lindsay and, um, all right, let me go back to help Hunter and hold on to. Oh, open. Yeah, this multitasking stuff's not working for me. But I, I know. I, when do you get to be my age? <laughs> oh, I'm, the older I'm, kind of, I'm kind of up there. I'm not one of those. Oh, really? Guys. I'm surprised. You sound, I thought, I thought everybody was young in here. Let me turn my camera on. Let's see. Let me see you. Let's see. Let's see. Where is this guy? Is this Jerome talking to me? Oh, yeah. Well, hi, Jerome. Hello, Miss Carol. There he is. All right. Hey, where do you work? I work in Shiprock. Oh, shut up. Okay. Yeah. Who's the guy that does the cleaning at CNM, the janitorial? Is he here? I thought you looked like you were at CNM because he was in my cubicle. Oh, really? And I told him to check out. I can't get my camera to come back on. I don't know what's wrong. Your optimized performance, your video is disabled. Oh, really? Well, shut up. Okay. Um, so let me get back to this so and get you finished. Okay. So you did the um, average, max, and min. Mm -hmm. Did you did you fill them? Select yeah. all three and use your fill button and drag yeah. over. Yeah. Okay, you got them filled. So what's next? Let me get this dog shut up. Hold on. Yeah. Now, go ahead. Um, can you help me with the, the last one, uh, the number fourteen? Getting the screen. Oh, uh, the number fourteen is go to page layout and make the width one page. Scale to fit groups in the middle. Yes. And just change the width to one page. So page layout. Got it. Got it. Yes. Now, who is that? Was that Ando? Yeah, that is me. That is me. I'm working on it. All so. right. So, Jerome's the one that I'm helping. Yes. yes. All right, oh. Jerome. Did you do the um charts? No. All right. So, select F five. No, wait, 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 wait. C five through F seventeen. And go to insert recommended charts, and it's the third one. Well, wait a minute. I, I might have told you something wrong. Hold on. Let me check myself before I wreck myself. B5 through F17. I'm so sorry. So it's B5 through F17. You want to have all the item names. Okay. B5 through F17, go to recommended charts, and it's the third one down. Third one down. Okay. It's a clustered column. Okay. And then you want to move that chart into A26. You have to move it down to um, A26 to H44. So you're going to stretch it. And make sure you leave a little gap inside that range. Okay. 
So you can't just put it right on the lines. You have to have a little gap the whole way around from A26 to H44. Okay. And it goes down to- All right, and then the, what's that? It has to go down to 43? 40, no, 44. H44. Oh, shoot. I had it 43. H44 to A26. Okay. And then just make sure you leave that little gap the whole way around it. I know I keep saying that, but it'll, it won't see it if you don't have a gap there. Okay. So then um, uh, change the chart title. It should be inventory. Then I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Okay, uh, next, we insert a new chart on a new sheet. So first, select C5 through F5. Hold down the control key on your keyboard and select all the totals, C18 through F18. And go to insert you'll see the pi is the round one and the first 2d pi and then okay, hold on, hold on. am i insert and the pi one sec sorry go ahead mm -hmm. whatever they can do whatever they can do there's no numbers just do whatever they can do Oh, you tell them. <laughs> so pi, and then which one? And then the first one, just click on the first 2D. Okay. The big first one. Then go to move chart. It's way up in the right, okay. in the ribbon on the far right. Move chart. Choose new sheet type. Inventory chart. You got it? Got it. Click OK. Cool. Now, what was the other thing? Let me go back to the instructions. I think I have a memory like hell, but yeah. all right. So we did that. We did the pie. Oh, oh, let's do the call outs and the footer. Yeah. So on the pie, oops, wrong. Uh, on the inventory chart, first of all, um, you should it should be titled store inventory. Make sure you change the chart title. We did the worksheet. You can ask Wayne to help you too if you need to. What's that? Nothing. Oh, Sorry. that's okay. Okay, so you type store inventory for the chart title. Then yeah. go over to the plus sign over here. It says elements, chart elements. Mm -hmm. And then hover over data labels, don't uncheck it. Click on the little arrow beside it so that you have some options for your data labels. Okay. And go to data call out. Isn't that cool? That's cool. Okay, so we got the data call out. Then we have to, even though we put a footer in the other worksheet, we've got to put one in this chart. Okay. So we're going to go to insert. insert. Header footer, way to the right in the text group, header footer. 
and we have to choose custom a footer. Custom footer. And then put the file name in the um in the left side. So you can see the file name icons green with the X insert file name. And then over on the right side, you're going to insert sheet name, which is right beside to the right of the file name. And then say okay. No, click OK. And now you should see your file name on the left, yep. your uh, sheet name on the right, mm -hmm. and click OK. okay. Yeah, looks like yes. Okay, go back to the inventory tab. Go to page layout and make the width one page. Did you do this? Don't do anything to the height, just change the width to one page. And by God, that's it. Oh, hold on a minute, the word art. Click on the word art, let's make sure we go to the right word art. So when we inserted the word art, go to format. And I think I picked the wrong one. It's B, no, no. This one, the one with the name from hell. Fill, black, text, color, one, outline, white, background, color, one, hard, shadow, white, background, color, one. You've got to be kidding me. Right. So third one down, first column. That's what we all missed on. That's in the format tab. I'm not. So when you click on the word art, you should get a format tab up on the top. Yeah. Far right. As soon as you click on the word art, it should give you this format tab. Okay. So click outside of it and click on it again and see if you got it. Uh, yeah, but everything's kind of grayed out. I don't have those big A's like. You oh. Do. Oh, so um, click anywhere in your worksheet to kind of restart, regroup. Okay. And then click on it again. Same, it's still grayed out. So you have these word out stars, they're not the colors they are? Mm -mm. Freaking weird. All right, um, click on it again. Um, are you in normal view down here? Mm. Huh. Well, I don't know what's wrong. That's Just fine. submit. If you miss that, I'll give you points to everybody else. Okay. I'm not, a, I don't understand why it's not working. I was a troubleshooting fool there for a minute. <laughs> and the name of it is our last name, first name. EXLO2 Skill Builder. EXL. Oh, there it is. It finally let me do my background. Yeah. Okay, let's see what you got. Close. Close. File. You're probably going to miss that one part. Yeah. I'm going in here and changing everybody to 50. Ooh. Oh, what the, what the hey? I need my number lock. Oh, refresh, refresh. Yeah, we've got a forty-seven point three. Yeah, that's the one. That's the exact thing. I'll get you fixed, honey. Okay. You have a great, great day. I'll All see right. you Monday. Thank you. You too. You got it. Have a good one. Bye. Update already. What's going on? Connected. Connected. Update.
What? Doggone it. Oh. <sighs>